speaking at one of these conferences, if that wasn't revealed in the last few minutes. Um, please be gentle with me, especially Marty. Um, I want to tell you about my experience adopting a CPAN module and maybe convince you if you haven't done that yourself, or if you're not already releasing on CPAN yourself, why you should give it a go as well. Um, you're not going to see much code in this talk. If you were here hoping for a technical summary of how Telegram bots are made or how their API works, I'm happy to prattle on at you about that separately, but come and find me later in the day. So the module we're talking about is Telegram bots. Um, I guess I should fill in some of the context. Uh, Telegram is an instant messaging app. It's somewhere on the popularity to privacy spectrum between WhatsApp and Signal. It's somewhere in the middle. It's been in the news a little bit since I submitted this talk, but I'm not, I'm not getting into that today. Um, I use Telegram extensively because a community that I'm involved in um, is, built, is built there, and the right messaging app is just whichever one your friends have already on. Um, one cool thing about Telegram is they provide a reduced version of their client API um, targeted at bot developers. So it's a, a simpler version of their API with a few extra safeguards in it, makes it easier to write. Uh, bots on the platform. Um, bots can use that to join groups and see and react to messages, see people joining and leaving chats, and, and so on. Um, and then finally, Telegram Bot is a modulicious based uh, call distribution, obviously, as well as here, um, which provides a convenient long polling based wrapper around some of that API's functions. So if this module already existed, and it obviously if I'm talking about adopting it, it did, um, why was that? Why did I feel the need to take on um, maintainership of it? Um, the Telegram bot API uh, works by sending updates to uh, to the bot application. Each update has a type, so there'll be a type for messages. There'll be a type for somebody joining the chat. There'll be a type for the bot being kicked from the chat. Whatever. Um, there are 30 or so types in the API currently, and new ones are added from time to time. Um, the version of Telegram Bot that was released four or five years ago, which was the, the last release before I took over, um, on seeing an update of an unknown type, would just the bot would just crash. And you couldn't work around that from outside. Your, your code using the library couldn't work around that. Um, you could subclass things and override the um, override methods to add definitions for more update types, but keeping up with those is inevitably bricky. Um, so what I was generally doing was just um, overriding the overriding method to where it was currently dying, just warn instead and move on. Conscious that that's not about why I adopt it, and I've only told you about the problems with the module. Um, the, uh, the, the module hadn't had an update in four years, and I, I found myself adding the same patch to every project I started that used the, I mean, the same patched version of the of, of the bot um, library to every single project. It would be incredibly convenient to just have the update in the version on CPAN, um, but the maintainer wasn't. Uh, um, for context, this this was the change. I don't know how readable it is on the screen, but it's um, yeah. I changed the die to warn and slightly clarified the uh, the error message, uh, and then I'm returning instead of uh, instead of dying. It's the, the dumbest thing that fixed the bug. Take my place again, sorry. Um, so how do you go about adopting a module? Uh, it turns out you just ask nicely. Um, it didn't, like I said, it, it, there hadn't been a, um, a new release in four years or so. So I emailed Justin, the previous maintainer, uh, to ask whether he'd like to have a GitHub PR for me or a patch or um, whether he wanted me to, to do a release and find out his preference. 
he preferred to just uh, reassign the module to me entirely to have the first come permission, I think, in pause, um, and just hand it over entirely. So a few days later, we did that. Uh, and now I'm the proud owner of a piece of open source software with actual users, which is slightly alarming. Um, I added uh, Julian, who you can see at the back there, as a co-maintainer as well. We've worked together on some additional features as well as the, the bug fix that brought us here. Um, and on a slightly alarming number of Telegram bots too. So what happens once you've asked nicely? Um, you make your own fork of the repo on GitHub. You make the change that's instigated you wanting to release the module. And then I got to work figuring out what else was involved in releasing. And it turns out it's well, very little. Um, the previous maintainer had used distzilla for most of the release process. I hadn't used distzilla in Angular before. Um, but it was really trivial to figure out what needed to be done. Um, the downside there is if, if you have a fleet of a suite of CPAN modules of your own that you're already releasing, you probably don't just want to just take their DZ config and um, change a few values. You probably want to bring it into your your workflow. But if you're already releasing lots of modules on CPAN and you already have an established DZ workflow, this talk was probably pitched a bit the way you're uh, <laughs> where you're at. Um, so you, but yeah, you, by default you inherit their their opinions on how how to do releases, how to build the module. And in my case, I was happy with Justin's choices, so I pretty much just rolled with them. So why do I think you should adopt the module? Um, I don't think my situation was that unusual. I, I think lots of us have libraries that we use where there's a bug or a quirk that we work around, and maybe it's not actively maintained. Maybe it's a large object relation mapping kind of distribution. Um, maybe we maintain a local fork or um, pull in patches um, to solve our problems. Um, but the barriers to, to sharing those changes with the, the rest of the community are actually really small. And there's very little downside. If you're worried about the responsibility of, if you, uh, for me, it was daunting that I would become the named maintainer of this thing in perpetuity. But if it's already not being maintained, even if you release it once and then never again, we're, we're no worse off, and in fact, we're better off because we have your your one improvement. Um, it's also been really gratifying to hear from other users of the module. I've had a few uh, patches by email. I've had a few pull requests on GitHub. I've had a few stories about how people are using the library. That um, in ways I, I didn't didn't expect. Um, I mean, obviously, they're running Telegram bots with it. Uh, it's just nice to know that I'm putting some, putting that time into something that's. I did I did I did this selfishly. I did this for my own convenience. It was just easier to keep uh, to install bots that I've written in places if I didn't have to pull in patched versions of the, the underlying uh, distributions. Uh, but actually, it turns out it's helped other people as well. That's that's really um, satisfying. There are some. Uh, there are some reasons you wouldn't adopt the module. There are going to come downsides. Um, so, for instance, Telegram's bot API allows you uh, to receive updates in two ways. You can do long polling, or you can uh, use web hooks to receive them. Uh, when Justin created Telegram bot, he decided to use long polling only and to not implement the web hooks route at all. It doesn't remove any of the functionality of the API, but it uh, at scale, you would run into problems. To take the existing distribution and change that decision would be a significant piece of work. Um, by adopting an existing module, I've committed to his design choices. 
and, and in this instance, I'm completely happy with that, but it's something that you might, if you think that you want, if you thought that you wanted to maintain it long term and you want, like, maybe ad adopting locks you into a decision that you might not have taken if you'd um, made something like that at the end of the day. Um, it seems silly to talk about this Telegram bot library and not show at least one Telegram bot working. Uh, so this was actually how I got to London yesterday. Um, I have created, I have, and this is just something I made for myself to use, although it is publicly uh, available. Um, the dumbest, the least user-friendly interface for searching for train times in the UK, which is an accolade. Northern Rail have an app, for instance. Um, Uh, but yeah, I, I just I send up um, the central reservation system codes for the two stations I'm traveling between, and it tells me the next four trains between those stations and whether they're on on time. Um, well, maybe on time. Sometimes cancelled counts as on time because it's just it's actually looking for not delayed. Um, cancelled is the most technically correct kind of on time, but <laughs> but this was something that I could. Work up in in a, an afternoon um, using the module, uh, and the fact that and the, you know, the ease of use of the module is what brought me here in the first place. Uh, I've just been told that I'm halfway, but actually that's the end of my story. <laughs> um, uh, oh, in my speaking notes, it says if we have time left, um, I could take questions. If there are. I kept expecting to run into a wall. I, I thought when I contacted, I've got a microphone and you haven't. Thanks, thanks, Julie. Um, so what surprised me most about, well, the question is what surprised me most about the process? Um, uh, and that's that I, yeah, I expected to, I expected to run into more barriers. I expected things to be harder. I thought the things would be harder with the sort of the social process steps, the, the bits where you ask nicely if you can do the thing. Um, and that was fine. He was uh, delighted to be asked and more than happy to hand it over. And I thought that, um, I thought oh, I'm going to have to learn all of Diesel before I can do this release because the existing thing uses Diesel. No, I didn't. I watched, um, uh, I watched a talk from a New York Carmongers meeting and then had a go and it was fine. And it just, yeah, the, the lack of, Obstacles, some of it, lack of friction between deciding to do it and. Uh, so. Is the process of migrating the module from your namespace, uh, their namespace to your namespace, is that taking care of for you? And does it leave artifacts in their namespace, or does it clean them all over? So can I just, when you said namespace, do you mean um, calls or calls or namespace? Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Okay, so, so does he still have the old version in his namespace, or do they need to put a whole lot to you? Or how does it work? So, uh, so the, the next repeat the, the, the uh, So the question was about whether adopting leaves artifacts in uh, the cause namespace for the uh, of the previous maintainer, and, and the answer is yes. Uh, if you look through the previous uploads, some of them are still under uh, J slash J Hawkins or, or whatever. Um, I don't think that's a. I mean, like, have I got a new model to follow through with the general object that has a new maintainer type? Uh, so, if realistically, anyone looking for the distribution will find the, the latest release first. Um, Meta CPAN certainly has, still has most of the Google tree for that and um, will default to the latest. And that's got my. Uh, he's credited to my North section, but it's very clearly uploaded by, by Joe Kluge. Um, I don't think that's, I don't think that's a huge issue. There is obviously a, a GitHub instance of, of the repo, which I forked from, um, but then GitHub allowed me to cleanly break that uh, fork as well. So um, there are now just two un unconnected repos on GitHub. He's free to take his down if he, uh, or, or indeed to replace it with a fork from mine. 
Um, so I don't, it, I don't think it creates any confusion. I don't think it creates any error for uh, any avenues for people to break the old maintainer. Hi, James. Um, Hi, Martin. Having um, adopted one module and encouraging people to adopt modules themselves, which module are you going to move on to next? Which <laughs> I don't have any immediate plans to adopt the next module. Um, I would have to look at the, I think there are some lists of, you can tag the modules as wanting adoption, um, but how actively that's used, I, I don't know. Um, yeah, I think um, Ask Neil Bowers what I should adopt next is the, <laughs> is the better answer. I think this is my last question as well, looking at the time. Yes. If you are uh, the first come maintainer of a module, you can add either adopt me, make sure I'm doing this right, adopt me or hand off, those are two separate things, uh, and there's needs help as well. So there's various ways to indicate if you are the first come maintainer. Okay, so uh, that's just the first come maintainer. Come maintainers can't add those, I guess. Right, and okay. I was going to say, so if you are the maintainer and you want to hand it off fully, then you uh, you can click the thing yourself. You can ask the pause admins to do that as well, to hand it off fully to someone else. That, there's only one, and they become the new owner of that module in pause space. Does that make sense? Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to repeat all of that, but I think the recording got it. <laughs> um, all right, cool. I think am I, I have one last, have one last question. This, this is actually probably a question for everybody here as well, because I asked for different propositions. I'm trying to adopt the module and the maintainer has just completely vanished. I've talked to the pause principal and got no reply. Ah. I think, I think this, this is a great venue to find a pause admin and, uh, and solve, that, solve that problem. I, I think that's me. Thank you very much indeed.